Okay, so one of the most common responses that I get and all of my brothers and sisters get uh, when we're fulfilling the royal law and making these videos and whatnot is, um, you know, oh, what you're saying is true, but, you know, how you're saying it is so harsh, it's so mean, it's so, you know, um, so abrasive, you know, you need to speak with love. You know, you need to speak gently. That's the fruits of the spirit, gentleness. And, you know, the reason why people say that is because people don't like to feel convicted. They don't like to feel convicted. So, you know, Yeshua tells us to make sure our speech is always seasoned with salt. You know, and if the salt has lost its saltiness, wherewith will it be seasoned? And it's good for nothing. You know, it's just to be thrown out and trodden under foot of men. Now, your speech being seasoned with salt and always speaking with salt means that you speak with grace, with conviction. So, as a servant of God, when you're preaching the word of God, people are supposed to feel convicted. And if they don't feel convicted when you're speaking the word of God, then you are good for nothing and you are to be trodden under the foot of men, which means you're sent into great tribulation and if you study up on the evil servants, you're going to see that they go into great tribulation because they wouldn't fulfill the royal law according to scripture. And I'm even, I wasn't even meant to read this one, but I'm right here. I might as well read it. Titus 1 verse 13. This witness is true. Wherefore, rebuke them sharply that they may be sound in the faith, not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from the truth. You see, so we are to sharply rebuke the fables. And guess what? The church is full of fables. Once saved, always saved. Saved by unmerited favor. Jesus is God. We don't have to keep the Ten Commandments anymore. We're just saved by unmerited favor, you know. Jesus ended the Ten Commandments. We're not under the law. Like these people have no idea what they're, what they're talking about. They're desiring to be teachers of the law, but don't understand neither what they say nor what they affirm. And they're leading people astray. And so those people need to be sharply rebuked that they may be sound in the faith. Being sound in the faith means that they're sanctified in the word of God. So in order for people to be sanctified in the word of God, you have to speak the word of God. And guess what? The word of God is not this smoothie, tickle and doctrine. It's a sharp rebuke. Because we live in the last generation, the generation of God's wrath, and the whole world is deceived apart from the very elect. So people need a sharp slap around the head to wake themselves up. So, if we read um, 2 Timothy 4, I'm just going to run through some scriptures where it tells you, you know, because basically, the whole Bible, I'm only going to read a handful of them, but the whole Bible is warning you that, there's like two, think of it like this, there's two groups of people, okay? There's a group of people who are going to preach the word of God and deceive you. And there's a group of people who are going to preach the word of God and speak truth unto you. Now, the first group of people who are going to deceive you, they're going to do that by speaking these smooth ear tickling words. They make you feel all warm and fuzzy inside, you know, like a big, like a big hug around your ears. And they're going to speak these words in order to deceive you. Because when emotion overrides conviction and you just feel all nice and cozy, then you don't listen to God's conviction. Or even worse, God's conviction isn't even there. However, the other group of people who are going to be speaking truth unto you, they are going to be speaking with harsh, convicting words. Like, in order to wake you up because you're asleep, you're dumb, you're deaf, and you need to be woken up. Okay, so, 2 Timothy 4, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but, this is the reason why they won't endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts, shall they heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables, which Titus just told us that they need to be rebuked sharply. Okay, now if we go to Romans 16. Um, 
Verse 17, Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned, and avoid them. For they are such as not serve our Lord Yeshua Messiah, but their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. By fair speeches, they are going to deceive the simple. Okay, now if we go to Isaiah 29. Uh, well, actually, let me go to Isaiah 30 first. I'll start off just for a bit of context. Verse 1. Woe to the rebellious children, saith Jehovah, that take counsel, but not of me, and that cover with a covering, but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin. These people are speaking with this illusion, this false, uh, this false covering of the spirit, but they're actually speaking through the Antichrist spirit of error. They're not speaking the truth. And this just adds sin to sin because they're not rebuking people for their sin. They're not listening to Titus 1. Okay, and then it goes on and it says that the result of these people preaching these smoothie or tickling words is that the people then say, I'll go from verse 9 of Isaiah 30, that, that this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of Jehovah, the instruction of Jehovah, which say to the seers, which is like the prophets or the watchmen, because the watchmen enter into the work of the prophets, which say to the seers, see not, and to the prophets, prophesy not, prophesy unto us, prophes sorry, which say to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things, speak unto us smooth things, prophesy deceits. These people don't want to hear the convicting truth. They want to hear these smooth ear tickling words. And, you know, the pastors are doing it, the rabbis are doing it, the so-called teachers on these platforms, you know, they're doing it as well. Shalom, shalom, brother. Peace be to you, shalom, achi. It's pathetic. They're just fulfilling these prophecies. Okay? Now, when me and my brothers and sisters understand this, so we don't speak like this, we speak harsh words, we speak the harsh truth, and we don't hold back, you know, we understand the rules of rebuke, those that seek to be obedient, you speak with compassion, but those who are lying to God's people, are lying about the word of God, they're getting a Bible spanking, okay, and then guess what these people are going to say, right, look at this, Isaiah 29, where are we, uh, Isaiah 29, yeah, for the ter verse 20, for the terrible one is brought to naught and the scorner is consumed and all that watch for iniquity are cut off that make a man an offender for a word and that lay a snare for him that reproves in the gate and turn aside the just for a thing of naught. These people are laying a snare for him who reproves in the gate. Those that fulfill the royal law. They're watching for little things that they can pick on and, you know, hold them up for. Oh, that guy was preaching absolute gold, but then he said that the church is full of bullshit. Oh, now I'm not going to listen to a word he said. And it's because they, they hear the whole message and they don't like it because the whole message is convicting. And then they hear you say bullshit. And then they say, oh, because he said bullshit. Now I'm not going to listen to anything that he just said, which is bullshit. Like, it's unbelievable. You are turning aside those that reprove in the gate. And you are, yeah, turning aside the just for a thing of naught. Like, these same bullshit doesn't matter. Listen to the full message. You just don't want to hear it because it's convicting. Because you've been given up to the ear-tickling fables. You want your ears tickled. You want smooth words. You don't want us to prophesy truth. You want, to prof you want us to prophesy unto you these smooth ear-tickling words. Not good things, not the refreshing of the covenant. Anyone who is like this, you need to repent. 